Hey guys, it's Yorkie here with some Project Cars gameplay and today we've got some footage with the Gentleman's Club. We're doing a 90 minute endurance race around Silverstone. Unfortunately, I won't be showing you the entire 90 minutes as there were a couple of bugs and glitches which didn't really affect the stability of the multiplayer. It just didn't look all that great. So I'll be showing you up to around lap 15, lap 16 when, that's when I started getting issues. Uh, but the action up until that is pretty good, pretty intense, and very close racing, and it was a hell of a lot of fun trying to do this 90 minutes endurance. or something that I haven't done in the game before, and it was really quite a unique experience. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this video. But yeah, this is basically to go alongside the World Endurance uh, Championship 6 Hours of Silverstone that they had last weekend. We did this the weekend prior to that. But we've got a mix of LMP1, G LMP2 and GT3 cars. And essentially we're just going for a formation lap here. And I've pulled off to the right because we are reorganising the grid. We're starting with the LMP1s at the front, then the LMP2 cars and then the GT3s. And then within those respective classes we're starting in an order that uh, they qualified in in a session prior to this. Unfortunately I didn't do the qualifying session. I was more worried about actually setting up the car for this race. Trying to find a decent setup that all basically make me feel comfortable through the entire duration so we're just reorganizing the grid at the moment and obviously because of the qualifying session I'll be starting at the back of the GT3 field I'm in an Aston Martin V12 Advantage GT3 car I chose the car because it's probably my favorite car in the game something I feel very comfortable with and I found a pretty good setup for it as well I was pretty happy with that but yeah we're starting at 10 a.m. in the morning Obviously we're doing a formation lap, it would have been 53 laps as you can see down in the bottom left there. And uh, what is it? We've got time accelerated to five times, I believe. We've got the weather set to real and the river the weather was set to two times or five times acceleration, something along those lines. But it does stay completely dry throughout the entire duration of this race. So now that I'm in the position that I'm meant to be in. I'm going to start warming up the tyres as you can see here. I won't be talking through the entire duration of the video. I'll probably go quiet in a number of places to let you guys enjoy the car sounds and everything like that. Uh, I've turned the TeamSpeak audio off for this one as well, so you can enjoy those car sounds. But yeah, I'm going to go quiet now and let you guys enjoy the build up to the start of the race. And just to let you know, when we do get the green, 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 basically we get it as soon as the GT3 cars come onto the start finish line. However, us GT3 cars cannot make or cannot pass other cars until we've gone over the start finish line. So, an interesting aspect that you'll see there when we do the rolling start. But anyway, yeah, enjoy.
straight away then we've had a pretty good start managed to gain about four places in the first couple of corners and now it's just a case of trying to settle down a tiny bit take it a little bit more easy through the next part of the lap and try and bring the tyre temperatures and tyre pressures back up to optimal racing temperatures as you can see they're a little bit low at the moment they're kind of in the high to low 70s depending on the individual tyre you can see that on the Motec display there behind the wheel and it's basically yeah trying to bring those up to temperature once I've got those up to optimum that's when we can really start pushing and really really starting to ring out the performance of the car because the cold tyres really aren't that great to be driving on it does take a couple of laps to try and get them up to temperature up to pressure depending on the weather settings and also the tyre pressures that you actually set in the car setup along with the setup as well all that kind of stuff does affect that amount of time that it'll take and what kind of temperatures that you'll be seeing and pressures that you'll be seeing from the tyres so you have to adjust those accordingly to the weather very interesting aspect makes it really quite challenging at times as well but anyway let's get back to the racing So that move was pretty crucial then trying to get past that BMW as you've seen the laps prior to that I've been hounding this R8 that's in front of me. I want to try and keep with him because he's going at a fairly decent pace but the guys in front of us two 
the other GT3 cars, as I believe there's two of them up there, an SLS and the BMW Z4, are disappearing off into the distance. I want to try and clear as many of these guys as possible and try and see if I can basically get into clear air, settle down, bang in some lap times and see if I can maintain or close the gap back up to those to then basically let the strategy come into play and see if I can potentially make a, a manoeuvre on those guys later on in the race. Obviously it's quite a long one so I need to play it fairly safe in places, not try and be too aggressive and think about the strategy as we get fairly close to the R8 in front of us. These two cars are fairly evenly matched in terms of performance. Obviously the GT3 cars have different handling characteristics. My car for, suffers from some mid-corner understeer. I've tried to set up the car to account for that and the R8 is pretty good, it's top end, probably isn't quite as good as the Aston Martin that I'm driving here and yeah, basically a very difficult car to try and pass but we'll see what we can do over the course of the next few laps. So that mistake coming out of Luffield cost me quite dearly then, obviously I tried to get on the power as soon as possible to try and get on a good run on that R8 to see if I could potentially make a move down into Cops. Obviously getting on the power that earlier, that little bit earlier than I was usually doing, obviously it lit up the rear tyres ever so slightly and that stepped out the rear end of the car. I had to back out of the throttle to try and save that but it whilst I'm doing so through that entire process I over ended up overheating the rear tyres so when I came into Cops I was downshifting and braking at the same time a tiny little trail braking as I came in towards the apex the rear end of the car just had absolutely no grip and just ended up sliding round the front of the car and obviously ended up spinning and losing a couple of places because of that so yeah, quite costly, as you probably saw there in the temperatures, if you did take a glance at the Motec display, it was, the left rear tyre was up at 109 degrees when I recovered back onto the track. Obviously, now I've got to try and, I've got to try and let the car settle, try and bring those tyre temperatures back down below the 100s, it's kind of the mid to high 90s that I want the temperatures in. Obviously, prior to that mistake, the tyre temperatures were exactly where I wanted them, I wasn't focusing on those at all, the car felt really, really good. I was able to really push the car and try and basically hound and pressurise the R8 in front of me as you saw. So that was a little bit unfortunate, you can see the tyre temperatures there, they're a little bit high on that left side of the car which is quite a common feature to Silverstone, obviously a lot of left handed corners so the left side of the car gets loaded an awful lot and it's something that you have to try and manage. Obviously they cool down the straights and it's basically just a case of taking it a little bit easier through the corners, not trying to get on the throttle as early and as hard as I have in the past and basically just trying to ease those temperatures back down into a normal operating window before I start really pushing and trying to close the gap back up to the guys in front of me once again. So yeah, a little bit more calm and cautious this time round and then It'll be a little bit of a stint of trying to put in some hot lap times and that in the rear view mirror is an LMP1 car and that right there is the difference in performance between the cars. Five racing laps and the LMP1 cars have already caught up to the back of the GT3 field so quite a substantial performance difference obviously now that we're starting to mix the field up a little bit with guys lapping us I've got to try and keep my eyes in that rear view mirror or that rear view monitor now as well and try and keep an eye out for the other LMP1 cars I believe there was only three of them and there was about seven or eight G uh, LMP2s and the rest were GT3 cars so actually it may have been a little bit less than that I believe it could be six or seven LMP2 cars it wasn't all that too wasn't all that many but yeah, it's now 
quite difficult, quite interesting. Obviously, I need to keep my eyes both forwards and also rearwards. But yeah, settle down, get some lap times in, close back up to the guys, try and make some overtaking maneuvers and see where we can go from here.
Okay, so as you can see then I managed to ca catch back up with a couple of the GT3 cars. Had to push the car fairly hard to do so, but we managed to get that eventually and I do now have an LMP2 car that is in my rear view mirror, so I'm going to hang to the left here and let him go down my inside into the braking zone here. We do have a second LMP2 car right behind him though, but there's a bit of a gap there he is, he's just popped on the rear view mirror, so we're going to let him go around the outside of me here. This acceleration should filter into that gap between us, which it does. It looks like the Aston Martin didn't quite see him, maybe? I don't know. But he's now passed us both. And we're now going to try and see if we can close back up on this Aston Martin. There's a couple of car lengths that we did lose and see if we can make an overtaking manoeuvre as he does shoot a nice little bit of flame out those side exhausts. And right behind me there is a BMW Z4. Now he did pit on a lap 10 and came out behind the other BMW, the M3 GT, as the LMP1 cars now come back through the field, the two of them, first and second, there they go, and it looks like he's just about managed to squeeze through cops there, the Aston Martin saw it pretty late and has gone and missed Apex entirely, I'm having to be a little bit wary because he's on my outside there, where I needed to accelerate, and the Z4 has just gone and, well, just gone and taken us both, coming down into Maggots, and now Beckett, so that played very nicely into his hands, and I had to essentially back out, although he's gone, the Aston Martin's gone a little bit deep here, coming out the exit of Beckett and into Chapel. So I'm going to have a pretty good run down the outside of him into Hangar Straight, and it looks like we've managed to make the move coming now down into Stowe. So I'm just going to take my usual braking line, and I've gone and lost the rear end of the car. Just, to go, just about managed to go catch it save it, there was a slight tap there and he's managed to slip back up underneath me so now it's trying to recover let the tyre temperatures drop back down a tiny bit again and see if we can prepare ourselves for another attack so getting very interesting getting mixed up that Z4 was one of the two that was out in the lead of the GT field and like I said, he bit on lap 10 and ended up coming back out behind us, but weighs on a set of new soft, well, a new set of slick tyres. He's got a lot more grip than we do. And looks like slipped up the inside of the Aston Martin. There, there he is. So he's on the inside for that corner. And we'll have the inside for this corner as well. So I'm going to slip in behind him. See if we can pick up the slipstream and as we come down towards Brooklyn's corner. Popping out of that now into the braking zone down on the inside is going to give me room here. So I'm going to take the apex, obviously leave him room on the exit here. As we come into Luffield, there's still side by side as you can see. And I'm going to see if I can perform an undercut upon the exit. Let the car slow down and regroup towards a late apex. Get on the accelerator a little bit earlier than he does. And it looks like we're managing to carry the speed out through Woodcut. And we're coming down into Cops, leaving him room there on the outside. It's just a case of hooking up that apex, which we do. And that looks like the move done and dusted. So, pretty interesting race in there, going wheel to wheel and through a number of corners, which probably isn't ideal in endurance racing. Yes, whilst it provides good entertainment, it's not good for essentially strategy and tyres. And as we go and lose the car, the front end of the car washes out mid corner through the second part of Beckett's there, which has allowed the LMP to car to slip past, which he needed to do anyway. He is lapping me, I'm having to go defensive to the Aston Martin now, so we're coming to Stoke, but it looks like I'm managing to hold the line, a little bit of oversteer on the exit there, but nothing too major, but like I was saying, endurance racing you want moves done and dusted fairly cleanly, and that was a mistake by me, purely because I could see an LMP1 car coming up behind us, he's looking in the mirror, and kind of missed my turning point, as the car gets very unsettled coming onto the start finish straight and there goes the LMP1 car now in through Abbey the first corner and losing a little bit of downforce as you can see just that tiny little bit making the car understeer more than I would like it to but it looks like we've settled down in front of this Aston Martin now and again it's a case of trying to bang in some black times and close back up to that Z4 that has now actually disappeared off into the distance as you can see from that battling so you can see just how much time it costs you going wheel to wheel with other cars which is not good for the endurance racing it provides great entertainment but not good for the strategy 
So yeah, we'll give you a story as to what happens towards the rest of the race as the footage is coming towards and then due to a visual bug with the LMP cars which I believe has now been fixed. It's not an issue. It wasn't anything major, it's just visual, it didn't look nice so I don't want to show it to you guys. But yeah, anyway, um, as you'll see after the footage ends, we catch back up to the R rate that I was battling with earlier. We continue to battle up through till about lap 25. That's when I make the pit stop and I come back out on another set of slick tyres as we've basically gone over half distance. The LMP1 cars were on lap 28, lap 29, so I knew they could last to the end of the race. Um, having battled with that R rate up until that point, obviously performing another car, he didn't actually pit for another 10 laps. So uh, I ended up coming back out about 12 seconds in front of him. I managed to get the gap up to about 15 seconds as he was trying to bring his tyre temperatures back up to normal. Then over the course of the rest of the race, he brought the gap down to about 10 seconds. Unfortunately, towards the end, I made a small mistake, which cost me about one and a half, two seconds, and I brought the gap down to roughly seven seconds. It stayed there until about three laps from the end of the race. When I went and made another mistake into Stoke Corner, I lost the rear end, and that unfortunately brought the gap down to one and a half seconds. I did manage to get back out onto the track just in front of him, but essentially it gave him the opportunity that he needed. He was on fresher tyres than me as well, so that game, that gap slowly but steadily came down towards the rest of the race as well, towards the end of the race, and then unfortunately on the very last lap. My graphics driver crashed and I didn't actually finish. I was first in class, I was sixth overall in the race after a number of crashes that had uh, forced people to retire and also a couple of disconnects as well. A couple of people had to leave for uh, various real life reasons that they weren't expecting. But yeah, ended up sixth overall in the race out of, I believe there was 14 drivers left. And obviously first in class, but unfortunately my graphics drivers crashed and I didn't finish, I didn't see the end, but nonetheless, really, really good racing. Something that was very unique as well, obviously, where the accelerated time of day was happening. It was a lot cooler, actually, when I made my pit stop, and when I came out of the pits, it actually took me about six, seven laps to get my tyre temperatures and pressures back up to temperature, and even then, I struggled to hold them there because of the cooling conditions. Obviously, the race went off into basically sunset, and, yeah, it really did quite struggle, but Nonetheless, absolutely fantastic, a brilliant game, really nice simulation, and that is obviously the end of the footage that you've seen there. I had to cut it short, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that one anyway. I'm hoping, potentially, that we could get another race like this and basically show that off, the full length of that to you guys, so you can see just how much strategy actually comes into play, and hopefully get you guys really excited for the release of Project Cars in early May, I believe. It is 7th and 8th of May for Europe and then for US and Canada. It is the 12th of May. Obviously, Steam for the PC is on the 7th. It opens at midnight on the start of the 7th. So, pretty close. It's about three weeks now. Obviously, the game has gone gold as well. So, any footage that I'll be showing you guys from here on in is what you'll be seeing in the final in the final release when it hits your hard drives, your your gaming cases and obviously your consoles, your PCs, all that sort of stuff. So yeah. Really good, really exciting times ahead of us as we come now to release. But yes, thank you very much for watching guys. Take care.